out on a limb and somehow still had to create his way out of that. He was just really a, a, a one in a billion type person. I was lucky Prince to know. passed away eight years ago and it shocked everyone around the world. Since his death, there has been a mystery surrounding what really happened. But now, it seems like there might be some closure to this big mystery in music history. Rumors suggest that Cat Williams is at the center of all this speculation. It's said that he might have some insight or knowledge about what really went down with Prince. There's allegedly compelling evidence to support this claim. Reportedly, Prince's final words hinted that someone might have been after him. Now, I know it sounds like something from a thriller movie, but bear with me. The word on the street is that Cat Williams could hold the key to unraveling this mystery. It's like a conspiracy theory, but stranger things have happened. So, let's get into it. Before we dive into the mystery, let's understand why Cat Williams might be the person to reveal the truth. It turns out that Cat and Prince were very close. In an interview with Club Shay Shay, Cat shared that Prince was a real friend of his. They were tight, like peanut butter and jelly. Cat talked about their deep connection, sharing thoughts on lyrics, music, women, and cars. In the interview, Cat mentioned that Prince was unlike anyone else in the world. He knew Prince his entire life, and they were in sync about important things like musical genius, ladies, and their love for sweet rides. Cat even revealed how they supported each other, especially in dealing with the challenges of the tough business side of things. Thanks. He was just an amazing individual. I, I was able to meet him when I was 12, and I knew him uh, my entire life through all of his changes. I was able to live me, like, because we share certain things. Our, our connection was lyrics, musical lyrics, um, women, and cars out on a limb and somehow still had to create his way out of that. He was just really a, a, a one in a billion type person. I was lucky to know. When Cat Williams hints that he knows what really happened with Prince's departure, it's not just some random person speculating. Cat was there. He shared more than a few laughs with the purple legend. In a 2022 interview with Arsenio Hall, Cat spilled the beans about how he was inspired by Prince. He revealed that he spent a cool five years as a rapper before transitioning into comedy. The journey began after meeting Prince at the age of 12 in Dayton, Ohio. Cat claims he knew Prince his entire life and considered him a guiding force. In classic Cat Williams style, he credits Prince for boosting his self-esteem, giving him that confident swagger. During the interview, Cat shares wisdom about Prince being a high thinker, always 30 steps ahead of the curve. We all know Prince was a musical genius, playing more instruments than most of us can name. But Kat suggests that Prince also taught him a valuable lesson about embracing uniqueness. According to Kat, Prince basically said, hey, you can be short, light-skinned, with long hair, and as long as the ladies love you, who cares what others think? Um, he, he was, um, he was a, a high thinker and um, a, a guy that was always 30 steps ahead of whatever the curve. Let's get into the spooky part. We all remember the story, Prince, the legendary artist, left us at 57, found unresponsive in his Minnesota estate. The official word was that it was an accidental fentanyl overdose due to counterfeit Vicodin laced with a potent synthetic opioid. But, let's be honest, that explanation left many of us with unanswered questions. Now, some fans are connecting dots between Kat saying Prince was always ahead of the game and the mysterious things Prince said before leaving us. People are throwing around theories that maybe Kat knew something Prince did, something sinister, like people plotting against Prince. You know how Prince was known for dropping mysterious lines, and some believe he might have clued Kat into the scoop. Let's dive deep into the rabbit hole of the theories surrounding Prince's death, because some folks think the official reports are just a bunch of nonsense. Now, let's talk about the strange puzzle pieces that don't quite fit when it comes to Prince's health. We all know Prince was the poster child for clean living, vegan, no alcohol, a workout routine that probably put us all to shame. So, when the news came out that he died from a painkiller overdose, it was like, wait, what? Even big shots in the industry, like L.A. Reid, were scratching their heads. In a chat on CBS, L.A. Reid spilled the beans, saying he believed Prince was all good in the health department. 
Prince was health conscious to the max, vegan lifestyle, no alcohol binges, and definitely not known for popping pills. But here's where it gets strange, when asked about Prince's health problems, L.A. Reid seemed unsure and spilled the tea on how Prince's commitment to staying healthy actually freaked him out. If you're doing everything right, eating green, working out, and still pass away early, what's the deal, right? What I know is that um, he was really health conscious. He was a vegan. He didn't abuse alcohol. I didn't know of him abusing that also really concerned me because it made me think that, wow, so you mean you do all these things to take care of yourself and you die? There were rumors that Prince wasn't doing well in the weeks before he passed away, canceled shows, emergency landings, and taking an anti-opiate. It was clear that something was off. But here's the confusing part, if he overdosed less than a month before, why wasn't he being closely watched by a doctor? I mean, that just makes sense, right? The fact that Prince wasn't getting the medical attention he needed is making people raise their eyebrows. Especially when you think about the business side of things. If you're booking tour dates, you'd want to make sure the main act is in top shape to avoid unexpected cancellations, especially at big venues. It feels like there's a missing piece of the puzzle here, and the mystery of Prince's health keeps getting weirder. Now, about this Prince mystery, it's like something out of a thrilling movie. Here's the spooky part, Prince was found in the same elevator he once called the devil. Yes, you heard that right. L.A. Reid shared this eerie detail on CBS, and it's enough to give you chills. Apparently, in a private moment, Prince mentioned that the elevator is, well... One time when I was with him privately, he said, you know what the elevator is, right? No. I said, no, what's the elevator? He said, well, the elevator is the devil. And so, for me, it was like really haunting when I read that he was found in an... If that's not spooky enough, it gets even weirder. In an episode of The Simpsons called Treehouse of Horror, they have a part where Homer Simpson takes out a bunch of celebrities, including someone referred to as a purple one. Yeah, you guessed it, the unique shaped guitar seals the deal, and it's by order of the government. Whether it's just a coincidence or something more mysterious, it's enough to give you goosebumps. Now, let's talk about the big battle Prince had with Warner Brothers because, trust me, it's a saga of its own. Back in the day when Prince was a big deal and signed to Warner Brothers, the struggle began. He laid it out, saying, I own the work because I paid for it and I did all the work, straight up. He created it, so he thought it should belong to him. You know, when I was a kid, I used to see these trails in the sky all the time, and I thought, oh, that's cool. A jet just went over, and then you started to see a whole bunch. Prince fought a big battle against Warner Brothers, putting up a strong fight to own his rights and have more control over his creativity. It wasn't easy, especially since he was trying to break free from a deal he signed when he was just 19 years old. The battle got so intense that he famously started appearing with the word slave on his face in 1999, a bold statement, to say the least. In an interview with Paper Magazine, Prince shared his desire to buy back his masters from Warner Brothers, but they flatly said no. So, what did Prince do? He dropped a bomb, saying, I'm going to re-record them all. Imagine two catalogs with almost the same music, but Prince's version would be the superior one. He gave people a choice, I either support the big company or back NPG, new power generation. The man had options, and he wanted fans to make their choices. Prince didn't hold back in other interviews either, openly talking about the industry's hold on artists, saying it plain and simple. As long as you're signed to a contract, you're going to take a minority share of the winnings. A select few of us will do well. The majority will not. Prince had a big fight with Warner Brothers to own his music, and after leaving, he rejoined in 2014 with control over his old music. But there was a catch, the label had global licensing rights. Some fans think the industry wasn't happy, and this might be connected to Prince's tragic end. Kanye West, like Prince, spoke out against artists not owning their masters, calling it a form of slavery. He shared his deal with Universal Music Group on Twitter in 2020. Prince's last public appearance was at a concert on April 14, 2016.
He faced health issues, consulted doctors, and tragically died on April 21, 2016, due to an accidental fentanyl overdose. Prince's legacy lives on, and conspiracy theories about his death speculate on industry pressures and secret societies. What do you think happened to Prince? Share your thoughts in the comments.